Good morning, my name is Miguel Carvalho Abrantes and today I'm going to present a topic that I found to be fascinating, which is what have classics ever done for us? Answers from around the world. Um, this, this topic begins with a personal situation. Essentially, in a particular point of my life, I was very sick physically and I started wondering, why should I continue studying classics? Should I give up on it and do something else with my life? I wasn't sure, and so I decided to go online and see if there were any kind of works or websites regarding this kind of question, presenting me what led other people to study classics. For example, what led Edith Hamilton to classics or M.L. West, what led my, pro my own professors too to classics. I could not find that answer, nor could I find that, uh, nor could I find anything that would give me a fair answer to this question. So I decided to explore it. Now, ideally, I would approach someone and ask them and be able to ask them infinite questions, but nobody would accept that. We cannot just sit with someone and go and go and go and go and ask them endless questions. They would, as you obviously understand, they would get fed up of it very quickly. And also, some questions may be too personal, and even more in some cultures, professors may not be willing to share their own answers. And this was a problem. I I had to think a lot about it, and eventually I decided that if I was going to investigate this subject, I needed to ask few questions, but questions that could provide plenty of room for development. I mean, if I provided a question and someone wanted to write just a phrase about it, they could. If they wanted to go above and beyond and write, uh, let's say, 10 pages about it, they should be allowed to. It depended on them alone. And so I decided to, like I said, to do some research on this, and I settled on four main questions. I will present them next. For now, all we have to, to do is to consider that they were four. I consider this number neither too small nor too big to upset people. And also, I noticed that in some cultures, people would not be willing to, to participate so much in this kind of question if someone else knew who they were. So what I did was essentially telling those people that they could participate in my study and would be credited anonymously. I would confirm their identity so that nobody tried to mislead me claiming they were someone else, and after confirming their identity, I would give credit them with an anonymous entry, but I would still collect their answers, because their answers were precious. And at the end, in order to thank them for their participation, I would offer everyone who participated a free copy of all the answers I had collected. This seems simple enough, because I did not have to, to, to pay anything extra for this, and it would be very uh, important to them, for anyone who participated to get the answers from everyone, too. And so, now let's head on to the questions themselves. The first question I ask people is, what led you to study classics? This is a, obviously a very, um, a very personal question, because I was trying to ask those people not what led everyone to classics, but what led them, them and them and them alone to classics. And I'm going to present you three different answers, um, three answers that show the wide range of answers I collected for this question. This first one is a very intimate answer. When, when I found just a small note, a small aside, 
And for these answers, you may want to stop the video a little bit and read them before continuing, since unfortunately I cannot read them all. There would be not enough time for that. This is a very intimate answer. Um, and to be completely honest, I, I myself cried a bit when I first read it, because we um, tend to forget that behind each professor or student exists a human being. This person um, that I, mean, I credit the met in him, this person went to classics because she heard it was difficult and she was hoping that that, that difficulty would in some way take her mind off what, she, what was going on on her personal life. It seemingly worked, but um, it is a, perhaps a strange path towards classics. Now, this second answer from um, a graduate in classics um, essentially presents us the importance of an engaging teacher and also in the importance of introducing classics at a lower level. Many people from the answers I collected said that they were introduced in classics at a lower level. It, both personally, I mean, some people started it on their own, other people started it because something else um, took them to classics. Now, this third answer, um, presents us the importance of philosophy, of some philosophical ideas behind classical authors. And I feel, I always felt, that this is an area of classics that is very, very ignored in the classroom because we study the texts, but we often tend to ignore the fact that some of those texts like, like this person said, like Archilocus, like Seneca, but also Plato, maybe Cicero, and uh, Boetius, and uh, countless others, may have a very important influence in our own lives. Now, on to the next question. I decided to ask people, what is the most unexpected thing you learn through your study in classics? I wanted to basically to see if they could surprise us and see what kind of answers they would give us all. This first person, for example, they say they, they thought that Latin originally thought that Latin was very hard and that texts would not be easy to understand. But later um, she understood that it was not actually like that that texts were fun and Latin was not so hard as she had heard. This is important. This is important because sometimes um, there is somewhat of a stigma regarding the classical languages. This second answer um, again talks about the parallels that one can establish between some elements of the literature from the antiquity and um, our own lives. This is, in my opinion, it's my personal opinion, I should stress that, I think this area is very, like I said before, is very ignored in the classroom. And maybe it should be more developed because it provides people with solutions and with possibilities for their own lives that, has, uh, that right now are very ignored. For example, when someone dies in our lives, there are many words in the antiquity about the pain felt when someone dies, like Cicero and many others, and yet those texts, and like the texts on love from Ovid, those texts are hardly ever presented to students. Maybe they should be presented more often. Now, uh, for this third, uh, third sequence, regarding the second question, some people were attracted to strange stories and to completely unexpected things, like um, the fact that there is obscene ancient poetry or the fact that some myths are very, very strange. Now, 
Concerning the third question, this is a very interesting one, but we will get to it later. Now, so let's jump to question number four. If you could recommend a single book or article to other readers, what would it be and why? The why I had to ignore here today due to, to time constraints, but essentially, with this question, I wanted to see what really captivated people's interest in, in terms of works, both from the antiquity and more modern ones. The top three primary sources that most people recommended were Homer's Odyssey, it was recommended six times, the Iliad, recommended four times, and Ovid's Metamorphosis came on third. I think it was recommended three times. Now, this left me with a question, with an internal question. Were these works recommended because they are frequently studied or are they frequently studied because students enjoy them? Uh, it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy, I, I think, but I was not, ultimately I was not able to find this. Uh, now, regarding secondary sources, the most recommended work was Greeks and the Irrational by Eric Lotz. Um, many people um, recommended just some works that were recommended just once or twice, and a few even recommended their own books, were, which was a bit unusual. Now, let's go back to question number three, which is the most important for today. Question number three was, what impact did studying classics have in your life? This is the subject that this whole conference essentially should be talking about. And this is, uh, for me, it was the most important part, I think, because I wanted to see what were people getting out of classics. Some people, and I give here two examples, if you want, you can stop the video now and read them. To some people, essentially classics gave them inspiration to their lives. A second group told, told me that they either they got careers in classics now, or they were hoping to have those careers. This is an, a point that should be stressed, in my opinion, should be stressed to students more often that they are not all going to to have a career in classics. It, in theory and also in practice, it would not be possible to get them all careers. And the the second answer I I repeat in here is particularly important because someone they did not want to 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 give us their identity said they were unemployed and lived with his mom. Um, that's essentially what one of the reasons that keeps people away from classics is that they don't see the possibility of having a good job or a job that pays a lot when they go to study classics. And we should try to find a way um, to counter this argument. Uh, but we should also, at the same time, be realistic and tell students that sometimes they cannot have a job in this area. In my personal case, I can tell you that I do not have any kind of monetary, um, monetary support to my own research. Basically, I research part-time and work in other areas, and I essentially research because I love doing so. Now, on to the next one. According to some people, um, classics can, sh can shape very importantly our vision of the world. Once more, you may want to stop the video now and read the, the two answers I, I provided here, since they are important to this subject. Let's, um, let's go to the next one. Um, some people said that studying classics made them learn completely new things. Uh, either regarding things that we would not generally associate with classics, like grammar or uh, new languages, but also the fact that by studying classics, one can have, can have an improved sense 
of the pleasure when they read texts. I myself have felt this many times. I'm sure that people who are listening to me also felt this pleasure when reading texts. And this is important because if someone, for example, uh, likes reading, this will make him, make him or her um, have even more pleasure in dissecting and fully understanding texts. But classics may also lead people to entirely different areas. Um, these, these opinions here are a bit more, uh, are a bit longer. You may once more pause, pause this video and read them. Um, these basically, these people, these two people studied classics, but then ended up going to, to do something else. But they openly admit that classics had some importance to them in those other paths. Um, finally, in some cases, studying classics may have results that are completely unexpected, that both me and any of you could not have predicted, like in these two answers that I reproduced here. Um, sometimes it's maybe just, uh, we could call it fate, that something happened and the person ended up going to classics and they enjoyed it and then something else happened. And this is important because, well, we don't know what will happen in the future, but if they enjoyed classics, well, that's always good. Now, to conclude, if, uh, um, if you want to learn more about all of this, about the research, the small research that I did, it took a, a few weeks, but I edited the entire research as a small ebook. You can find it in many online stores. It's almost free. I would have made it completely free, but unfortunately, those stores do not allow it. And it contains all the answers from the people I've collected. And, and to, to finish this participation to the conference, I'd like to thank everyone who accepted to participate in my study, even if their name was not presented among the answers provided in this video. There are many, many people in the, the, the study, and unfortunately, I could not provide their answer, all of their answers here, but I tried to reproduce a wide range of different answers in a single um, in a single slide, essentially, by the fact that some of the answers capture the spirit of the other ones. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, despite my inexperience with uh, this kind of presentation, I hope you have enjoyed it.